I've been very bearish on the markets for a long time, but there's a huge difference between what we think and and feel is going to happen versus what you need to do. The key, I think, for people to understand is you don't invest or trade on what people think or feel. And while I'm super bearish on the markets, we are long the market because the trend is still up. And this is the big disconnect is, yes, I'm bearish, but the trend is up. We ride, we follow the coattails of the market. So we identify if the trend is going up, then we're going to ride the market up. U.S. stocks began their third year of the bull market on Monday, with the S&P 500 reaching a new record. But history indicates that investors should brace for a potential downturn in the next 12 months. Since 1947, all 11 bull markets that made it past their second anniversary experienced at least one drop of 5% or more within the following year, with some even transitioning into bear markets. Chris Vermoylan, a renowned technical analyst and precious metals expert, shared his insights on the current stock market likening its movements to the ocean. He explains that, just as the tide lifts all boats when it rises and lowers them when it recedes, the stock market behaves in a similar fashion. Vermoylan focuses primarily on the U.S. stock market, particularly the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100, aiming to invest in these indices when they display strength and upward momentum. Reflecting on his journey, Vermoylan recounts trading during the tech bubble, which led him to develop a more refined strategy anchored in technical analysis and ETFs. Monday's close marked the S&P 500's 46th record close of the year as investors continue to power the two-year-old bull market higher. The Dow closed above 43,000 for the first time. More than 80 S&P 500 companies are scheduled to report third-quarter earnings results this week, with major names like Netflix, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley on deck. Over time, Chris Vermoylan has mastered the art of reading market cycles and waves, ensuring that he capitalizes on trends while managing risk through precise timing and strategic diversification into safer assets. As market conditions deteriorate and volatility rises, Vermoylan progressively shifts into slower-moving, lower-risk assets, transitioning from stocks to bonds, currencies, and ultimately to cash. Just as a surfer waits for the perfect set of waves, Vermoylan and his team use technical analysis to identify the optimal waves within asset classes like stocks, bonds, and currencies, riding each trend for maximum advantage while minimizing downside risk. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. The stock market to me moves like the ocean. Uh, when the tide goes up, it lifts all boats. When it goes down, they all go down. I was actually just doing a live mentoring session uh, earlier today with our subscribers. And one of them was talking about what about like Germany and J Japanese stock exchanges and India stock exchange, all this. So we layered them together and they all do the same thing, more or less. If the U.S. market is in a bear market, so are they. If the U.S. is rallying, they all rally. And so a lot of people, what they do is they buy a whole bunch of stocks, a whole bunch of different sector ETFs. As you mentioned, there's like over 2,700 ETFs or something like that or more now. I'm not sure, but there's a ton to pick from. But it doesn't matter what you own. Diversification among stocks, it's all the same trade. It's just some move up or fall less than the others, but they all move together as kind of one play. So the way I look at the markets and select my ETFs is very different. I look at the US stock market as the SP 500 or the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ 100. And all I want to do is know is if, if those indexes are moving up and there's power behind them, then I want to own those two indexes or one of them, whichever one fits the criteria better. Potentially, we could own both. If stocks are not moving up, and they don't meet our criteria of a strong trend and um, and they're stable, then we'll look at a different asset class. So we'll pull out of everything. We we only trade the index ETFs and then we'll move to like bond, the bond ETF, TLT, or potentially the US dollar index or the US dollar inverse ETF. So it doesn't matter if the US dollar index is rallying or falling, we can actually still take advantage of that. And then sometimes we just move to a cash position like BIL, which pays you daily interest and a monthly dividend. Uh, no downside risk. You're just sitting on the sidelines waiting, earning a little bit of interest in until there's a new opportunity. Each of those assets, you go from the stock market to the bond market, to currency, to cash. As we move down, the markets are usually going, getting crazier and more volatile. And each one of those in this asset hierarchy that I call it is a slower and slower moving asset. So we're moving to slower and safer, more consistent moving assets as the world kind of gets crazy, but we can still pull money out. Just to, to quickly kind of continue on this ocean wave, think of yourself, or this is what I do. I'm, I'm a surfer. So think of yourself walking down an ocean beach. You see surfers floating out past the break on their boards, relaxing, talking. What are they waiting for? They're waiting for that set of waves to roll in that come every four or five minutes. 
And the stock market is very similar. There's five to 12 waves that roll through these top asset classes I just talked about, stocks, bonds, currencies. All we do is we wait for those waves to come, and then we can identify with technical analysis, money flow cycles, how strong are those waves? We hop on the one that meets our criteria, and we ride the wave with an ETF, one ETF position, very, very simple and straightforward. And the nice thing about catching a strong wave is you also know when it's starting to weaken. And so we can start trimming out profits, moving our protective stops up, and we can carve off that wave before it, it you know, takes you down with it. Stocks have whipsawed last week amid intense debate over the state of the economy. Now the Fed has finally eased up on policy. Its decision to cut by a jumbo 50 basis points raised concerns it might see risks the market could not. That has investors wondering about a no landing, where the economy keeps growing and inflation risks once again emerge. Chris Vermoylan believes the economy is gradually slowing down, and we are nearing a tipping point where it will become more evident that interest rates will continue to fall. However, for now, we remain in a period of uncertainty. Looking ahead, Vermoylan predicts a potential 5-8% to 8% rally over the next 2-3 to three weeks, driven by strong short-term chart patterns. While the market may stretch this out over a longer period, he believes the rally could extend into the next month. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. And the big question is, I think, how is the economic data? What's the Fed going to do o- over the next you know, quarter or so? That's going to give some good insight, I think. Uh, I think the economy is slowly grinding down and slowing. That I think we'll hit a tipping point where we'll be confident rates are going to continue to fall. But right now, we're still in, in no man's land. But bonds, their chart pattern and everything looks very much so like a major bottom is getting put in place. Equities, I mean, we're looking at the, the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has about 8, 8% upside potential for where we are right now. So there's still actually quite a bit of upside. The SP 500, I think, can rally about 4 or 5% from where it is right now. So, I mean, right now, I like the equities market. Right now, when we were looking at money flows, where's money flowing and, and what's going on in the markets, uh, equities is the place to still be in. I think it has the best potential and, and there's still some upside uh, left in that. Uh, and because we kind of just focus on one asset class at a time, the other ones we don't really care about because we want to take the most volatile one, which is the equities market, if it is favorable. We don't want to go to something really slow when there's a clean signal in, in equities to go long. So I think equities is still the play. I think there is that huge wall of worry. We just saw that massive correction in August. We saw the VIX spike like 175% in one day, massive gap down. We saw panic selling on the New York Stock Exchange. I have this little indicator that shows us if people are panic selling or if they have FOMO, tells us usually short-term uh, pivot highs and pivot lows on the markets. And it maxed out as well. So we've had a cleansing event over the past uh, two months, really. And now the market is primed and ready for a another big leg higher. And people are nervous. I mean, everybody, it seems like everybody right now keeps telling me like they're worried to be long stocks. They think the market's falling. They're not acting normal. Uh, But really, when I look at the stock charts and and everything else, I'm like, it's just normal price action. And the trend, the underlying trend is up. Money is flowing in. There's definitely some distribution selling going on. We were looking at on the intraday charts today. There's some huge institutions unloading huge amounts of their portfolio. They keep hitting the market. Uh, every time it gets up to a resistance area, we see high, high volume. So it's distribution selling, but that's normal. That's just big profit taking from institutions that take months and months and months to unload their portfolios. I mean, this next leg up based on the daily chart pattern looks like over the next two, three weeks, we might actually see this five to 8% rally in the stock market. I think we've got maybe over the next month, I think we could see this next wave up if we get this leg higher uh, to stall out. When will it officially top? I kind of feel like we kind of need to wait for the elections. I think the market is kind of waiting to see what's going to happen there. The elections throw a real curveball into it. Um, but other than that, I kind of look at short-term patterns and how far they, they, they expand out. I would say three to four weeks, I think the stock market could be up like I think 6,000 for the SPY or the SP500. The NASDAQ, I think, could rally about 7, 8% from here. So there's yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good move. U.S. stocks are hovering near record highs after several major banks reported stronger than expected summer profits. However, investors should prepare for potential setbacks in the next 12 months, as history suggests that bull markets entering their third year, like the current one, typically experience at least one decline of 5% or more. Chris Vermoylan, a technical analyst and market expert, compares stock market movements to ocean tides, with prices rising and falling in cycles. As market conditions deteriorate, Vermoylan strategically moves into safer assets such as bonds, currencies, and cash to manage risk. How do you adjust your investment strategy during periods of uncertainty, like the one we're in now? Are you more inclined to stay in equities or shift to safer assets like bonds or cash? 
Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.